Creek week. It's a creek this week. Creek this week. Well, hey guys. Hey AC3, how's it going? I'm back. I'm alive. Alex, you've been like absent doing youth stuff. And you know, I hang out with middle schoolers and play Dungeons yeah, and Dragons. That's you know, great, that's you pretty know. much what a youth pastor does. We're doing that really important connecting work. Oh, it's so, it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. And we're missing Dan. We are missing. We Dan. have not yet got the triple threat. No, we haven't. Not for a long time. Anyhow. It's, yeah. But he's doing some much needed rest right now. Wait, is that you over there? It's oh, your fuzzy. Oh, oh I was you're, fuzzy? You're fuzzy right now. I, and you needed your glasses. Yeah, I need my glasses, yeah. Oh, you're wondering what Rick just did that horrible dad joke for. It's a little segue. It's a segue into our next uh, series. Oh, yeah, that's right. In We're February doing... at AC3, what are we doing? Unfuzzed. That's right. We're talking about unfuzzing the vision. Yeah, so I just wanted to start off with saying, like, hey, this is going to be an awesome series to really get to know what AC3 is all about, what, why we exist, what what do we do, why do we wake up every morning and come to church mm -hmm. and, and do what we do, right? Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I thought a great way to start that off would be to ask Rick about when the church started and what his uh, what the heart of the early church was, you know, as far as AC3 early church, not yeah. Acts. Yeah. But uh, AC3, 1996, take me there. What, yeah. What's going on? Well, even before 1996, there was a little group of friends that we were kind of uh, captured by the Seeker movement. And, and uh, it's kind of growing a bit old or long in the tooth now, but initially the Seeker movement was just a movement inside of mostly evangelical churches that recognized that uh, church culture in modern Protestant churches was totally disconnected to a growing wave of people who had given up on church. <laughs> And they weren't going, and they were either on the outside skeptical, or they had born and raised in church, and they had given it up because it didn't connect with them. So uh, we were passionate about that group of people. We mm. just said, you know, is anybody reaching those people? Will they darken the door of any church? church. And uh, we called them seekers. Uh, there was great debates inside the church as to whether a church should be seeker-targeted versus seeker-friendly. It was a ridiculous sort of little infighting but what we were obsessed about was to create a safe place where those people could be in and um uh, befriended by us mm -hmm. and then create a space in our weekend experiences that was designed to speak to them so what church was always uh for in in christian circles unquestionably was for christians but the idea of leveraging a weekend environment to enhance my personal work of befriending my neighbor mm -hmm. and talking about my faith was just unheard of. That was just really unheard of. And we, we most of us had grown up in, in Christian youth groups, mm -hmm. which even in the 70s and 80s were doing what you're doing, which is creating excitement and relevancy mm -hmm. and let's speak to the issues and going the, on and the sub and and the um, the obstacles that that uh, a youth would have to considering Jesus. Some of those, especially in youth ministry, is following Jesus is no fun. So one, <laughs> of the, so one of the big obstacles you're immediately trying to get over is the idea that following Jesus can be fun and exciting and life changing. And so we said, well, you know, how, how could this become a youth group for grownups? Okay. So the weekend experience that we initially launched in 1995 was kind of two-parter. We had a believer service where we're building up believers, challenging yeah. them in their faith, really stretching them to know and grow and love, love Christ more. And then uh, we had another completely separate environment in the early days. Okay. There was more than one service on the weekend. Okay. And that service we called our, um, uh, we called it Connection, and it was a, really a service for investigators. Okay. So we expected our core to go to that, and we expected them to bring their neighbor. Okay. And so it was kind that's of all cool. about uh, uh, getting the cookies on the lower shelf. And it's cool to see how that's morphed over the years, you know? Yeah, it has. And what's really cool, so what I hear you saying, Rick, is you just, you know, you took the book of Acts yeah. and you just applied it. You know, it's like yeah. in the book of Acts, what did people do? They met in homes and they went and they reached people and they taught people the Bible. Yeah. They taught people about Jesus. And that's exactly what you guys did. You met them where they were. Yeah. Not where the, you weren't expecting them to come to you. You're like, let's create this environment that would make them want to come to us. Right. Would make them want to step foot in the door. And really you were encouraging people to go and invite people. So you're encouraging right. people to go and reach out right and, and get into the community um so that's pretty cool and then you know now covid hit yeah and that just did a number yeah uh you know we have this new generation gen alpha that has not uh. lived without a smartphone yeah and uh so the environment has shifted mm -hmm. um exponentially so why um 
has the mission changed or i mean can you kind of speak to that yeah so this is why we're going to have a whole month on unfuzzing the vision because our passion for reaching those people who are far from christ the people who are currently either in in um you know skeptical mode or just spiritual seeking mode who really aren't interested in darkening the door of a church on a sunday morning we're still passionate about those people here's the deal is that because not just because of covid covid just accelerated this trend <laughs> but the trend was that the increasing post-christian nature of our culture meant that people aren't thinking about christianity and they don't know they, they're knowing less and less christians mm. that they would interact with it yeah. on, on a, in a natural way so the idea of them showing up at church the way we kind of had built a lot of our ministry on this attractional model we will attract them to church and when they get here it's going to be exciting and relevant it's going to speak to their concerns and answer their questions right we still want our weekend services to be like that oh yeah but we realize that we're gonna have to move more and more of our resources for outreach outside of that because the the invite is so much more difficult. Mm. The natural a way that a, a person might just organically show up in a church because they were either born and raised, and maybe I need to get back to it, or raising kids now. You know, we got Janora, so yeah. maybe we should bring her to church. Got to bring her to we, church. We haven't been to church in 10 years. And the, that is not going to happen. No. And, and not nearly as organically as it would in 1995. So the shift for us and the clarity we want you guys to have at AC3 is that we need to be doubling down on the intentional integrity friendships that we have mm. with outsiders outside of the weekend experience. And we need to do more in terms of creating side doors into our community that are not necessarily a weekend service. Places where we're meeting needs, mm. places where we're addressing people's uh, physical concerns, uh, where they're, we're addressing social concerns. Right now, there's a mental health crisis. There's mm -hmm. a parenting crisis with increasing family mm -hmm. breakdown. There's yeah. a financial crisis where people don't know how to manage their money. There's all these crises where the church could touch, where where Jesus followers at AC3 could be leveraging themselves, their talents and their relationships and their opportunities to do what we've always done. Right? We, this hasn't Reaching changed. It hasn't changed. Change. This hasn't changed at all. It's just that we're doubling down on the priority of you and me. Reaching and our community. Reaching our community. Then, yes, will they eventually find their way here maybe? And then the teaching from the pulpit where I have a super high passion for making Christianity relatable and understandable mm. to unchurched people. Still then, happens. Then you and me can have, can have a partnership in that way. I'll bring my friends. You bring your friends. Yeah. And then in an environment that is still hopefully... Um, exciting, creative, and uh, relevant can help um, move the ball down the field. You know, make Jesus understandable and accessible to people who aren't considering him right now. Or yeah, why would I care? You why know? would I? Like, what I have, difference would this? I have make? a million things buying for my time. Or could this even be true? Yeah, you could, know, I have a lot of questions. Yeah. And so that's what I love is that we're still continuing our investigations. We're yep. still continuing all these things, but we're meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. And we're helping them take their next step. And, and it's whatever that looks like for them. And so um, our encouragement is that you would come to this series, that you would understand our culture, why we exist. And if you've been a part of AC Pre for years, man, we still want you to come because there's a lot of new people. Yeah. There's, I'm a new person. Yeah. And so, yeah, we just want to onboard you onto yeah. our history. We're going to do a lot of storytelling Ooh. and we're going to talk about AC3's past and what the what the hills and valleys are that we've gone through to get to this place of so clarifying vision today. I love it, Rick. Um, I'm really excited. I hope you guys are excited, too. We encourage you to invite your friends and we will see you next week. Well, that's Alex. Oh, well, your, be your beard got thicker. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Uh, you can see now. <laughs> I can't. Because you unfuzzed the vision. Yeah, that's it. Ha! That's good. See how um, that works? Yeah, Rick's fired from this, from the Creek Week. Yeah, so, sorry. Yeah, he's, anyway. I haven't gotten used to using props. So how about you stick with, uh, with the sermons? Just, okay? just do the teaching right. piece. Okay. See you guys next week. <laughs>